what I wanted to explore in this story was human interaction, male-female interaction. And what happens when the two parties involved are in a power struggle for each, with each other. And of course, in many power struggles in life, who's winning or who's losing at any moment is measured in money. But in this book, it's not measured in money, it's measured in sex. I got interested in science when I was a young child. And I was very concerned about how things actually work. And in particular, I was concerned about how the world in general uh, works. And uh, so when I went to university, I decided to study mathematics because that was sort of underlying all of the theoretical aspects of the things that I was really interested in. Initially, the books that I wrote were technical books that you know, only a librarian, a colleague, and my mother might ever, ever look at or even open. Uh, and I wrote several books of that kind. Um, and then at some point I started thinking, you know, there were all these kind of questions that I was interested in that didn't really have so much to do with my personal research, but there were questions that were sort of in between science and, and uh, philosophy, where sort of science started becoming philosophical, where for philosophy started becoming scientific. Questions like the origin of life, the origin of language, existence of intelligent extraterrestrials. And so I, I, I took a handful of these questions and wrote a book about, each, each chapter of the book looked at one of these big questions. And I gave the current state of play at that time as to the different competing theories for, let's say, the origin of life. And just presented them in the book and then at the end of each chapter, I said, well, now, reader, you've seen the competing theories. You can choose any one that you wish, but here's the one I'm placing my money on. This is the one I like the best. And that book was actually a pretty big hit. It was a book called Paradigms Lost because it talked about science in a form that people could understand. And so that was the start of my uh, nonfiction, popular science writing life. In 1996, my wife uh, came down with a, a fatal cancer, ovarian cancer. And this was a long, drawn-out kind of business. It wasn't like something that just kills you real quick. And she was ill, and then better, and then immorial, and so on, for basically two years, till 1998. And she finally died in 1998 of this cancer. And of course, by that time, her death was no surprise. It was, it was, uh, it was not a um, shock uh, in the usual sense of, of like an accidental death, but it was well planned. And in fact, she told me many times while she was ill, she said, I want you to pay attention to your life after I'm gone, have some good thoughts about the time we spent together, but don't start obsessing about it. Uh, these things happen, it's part of life, and now you're gonna have to carry on without me. And I decided I needed to start doing something that would distract me from uh, the grief and psychic disruption that I had from her death. I took an apartment over in the third district of Vienna, and I decided I'm gonna think about writing in a different way now because I always wanted to write, and this was an opportunity to think, maybe I should not always just write nonfiction. And I spent uh, several months, two or three months, working on that, getting, having different ideas, putting things together, and so on. This, this was very good therapy, writing. But I declared myself cured, and all of the various ideas and thoughts and partial stories and whatever that I put together in that time they sat in my computer, and that's where they sat for the next 20 years until I decided it was time to take at least one of them out and finish it up. And so I finally created a story 
that in, let's say, literary uh, parlance, it's, it's a book, it would be called a Roman clef. It's a book that actually is based on real life, but it's fictionalized. And the main character in the book is a fictionalized, but not very fictionalized version of the writer. And so this book is a story about a older guy, me, a scientist, and an encounter that he has with a much younger woman who happens to be maybe 25 years younger than him. And she's a financial analyst at a big company in London. He discovers many things about this girl that are very disturbing. Uh, and, and she has a kind of psychopathic nature with some both homicidal and suicidal tendencies. And uh, he loves problems. And he never met a problem yet that he couldn't solve. And so in the end, the book, of course, has a lot of different kinds of sexual encounters, as one might expect between an older guy and a beautiful, young, smart woman. But some of these are a little bit on the, the wild side. And that's why the book has a subtitle, A Psychosexual Thriller. Pray for me, P-R-E-Y. <laughs>